So, uh, we've already taken a look at simple fractals on a single layer. We've had a brief look at outside colorings. We've had a look at ways we can explore within the, the fractal window. Uh, and we've had a look at how to change a Mandelbrot into a Julia using the Julia switch. Um, on top of that, we've had a fairly in-depth look at gradients. So now we're going to take our first look at layers. But because layers is a fairly complicated uh, topic, especially for people who are not familiar with using graphics edi editing programs, etc. We're going to break this down into a series of modules, uh, looking at just individual components, different things we can do with layers. And then at the end of this series of lessons, we're going to put it all together. What I would advise is that anybody that doesn't have a good graphics editing program, by that I mean something that supports layers, something that supports masking, etc. I'd urge you to have a look at the free GIMP, which you can uh, you can install on Mac. There's also the relatively inexpensive and pretty good, for, very good for its price, Pixelmator. And then you've got the you know if you've got lots of money and the the upper end of the the market, you've got uh, Photoshop. Uh, just to name a couple of programs that uh, do the job. Really, to get the best out of Ultra Fractal, you should have a fairly in-depth understanding of how layers and masking work in Photoshop. You know, we will cover it here. Um, you know, but it'll be very much a monkey see, monkey do type situation, unless, as I said, you have a, an under the hood understanding on what masking does and how, you know, basically how it affects the image. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for for now, and then we'll launch into the first of these lessons. Okay, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and launch Ultrafractal. If you already have it open and you've been working on something else, save your work, quit the program, and reopen it. And you should come back to something like what I have on screen here, which is the default Mandelbrot. Uh, with a default gradient, okay. And what I'll, what I'll then do is go ahead to the image tab. Make sure you have 640 by 480 pixels, uh, and maintain width to height ratio checked, okay. That's all we're really interested in for this lesson. Now, Ultra Fractal is a bit different to graphics editing programs in the way you add new layers uh, and delete them. Okay, a lot of programs like Photoshop, Pixelmator, etc., everything is driven from the actual menus. Uh, or alternatively, you can use keyboard shortcuts. I'm not really sure uh, if that is doable in Ultra Fractal, because I'm actually so used to doing things the Ultra Fractal way, to be honest with you, I've never explored it. it suits me fine. Um, the way we go about adding a layer in Ultra Fractal is done through the layer panels. Uh, if you recall, for example, how do we change a, a fractal formula, for example? We go up to the formula tab, and it's this topmost icon here, browse, brings, up, brings open the library. And then we can click on, you know, we can browse the standard, the standard UFM for a fractal type or go into the public database. This is what gets updated every time you update the, the public uh, database, which is something I think I showed you in the first lesson. Um, so basically that, that'll overwrite or add new, new formulae, etc. in there. We're not interested in opening anything else for the moment. Click cancel there. I just want to illustrate that, for example, that is how we go about changing based on the properties of a particular fractal uh, fractal type. If we go, want to change the coloring type, the same thing. We open up the, the, the outside coloring mode in this, in this case, we click on the same icon and we browse. 
OK to add a layer. What do you think we do? We open up the Layers tab, and here we have a number of options. OK. From top to bottom, what we have here is Add a Layer. Uh, second, we've got Delete a Layer. Then we've got Create a New Group. Okay, this is all stuff for a later lesson. Uh, this is Use as Mask. Okay, and then this is Reveal, Reveal Mask here, Show Mask. Okay, these are more intermediate, advanced things. We're going to be looking at these towards the end of the tutorial. Um, okay, we already have our answer. To add a layer, all we do is we click that icon top icon but what we're actually doing here we're not creating a new layer a new anything we're just duplicating basically what we have on the layer immediately below um, just to, to prove that what I'm going to do is turn this Mandelbrot into a Julia by clicking F7 if you recall um, again if you're looking at the fractal mode window down the bottom right okay you can see the Julia I'll click on it okay we've got a Julia here now, I'm going to show you something else again, which again is pertinent, and you know we'll be looking at this again through the course of the lessons. If you look at the background layer here, okay, and you right-click on it, or you command-click and click copy, okay, then go back into our Mandelbrot. So then we go back into our Mandelbrot fractal, and then we just click anywhere uh, within, sorry, anywhere within the layers palette. On one of the layers and paste okay we now have this Julia pasted into this document with the Mandelbrot we can go back to our Julia fractal okay close it because we're not really interested I just want to demonstrate something here so we've got our Julia okay uh, and if we now go ahead and we click add new layer it's not going to add the Mandelbrot it's going to add the layer we've got selected so it's duplicating the selected layer every time okay um, we don't want that that was just for illustration if you got something different it's going to basically duplicate whatever layer you have selected we're not interested in these so let's get rid of them okay in fact we might as well get rid of this as well because we're done for this lesson Okay, I now want to demonstrate how you go about hiding a layer, or how you go about moving uh, the content of a layer around on screen. Okay. Okay, you could do it using the using the fractal mode window. Okay, as I said before, but it's very long window. You have to basically, you know, you'd be selecting the outside, clicking in there. Um, I'm going to show you something much much easier. And really, it's it's the way way to do it in, in Ultra Fractal. But first, we've got to go ahead and duplicate this layer. So let's duplicate it. Okay. To make the illustration easier, uh, we're going to give it a different color. So again, this random control one. Okay. I don't like the blue, uh, green, yellow. Okay. That's that's that'll do. Um, okay. Whatever you press is going to be different because it's random. Um, Right, to move the contents, okay, this is going to move the contents of both layers, okay, and I'll tell you why in a second. But if you hold down the command key, okay, and just click drag, it'll move the fractal about in the window. Okay, if I turn off the visibility at the top, you'll see that the bottom layer is moved as well. And let's hit control a few times to go back to where we were. If you want to move just the layer, layer one, and not the background layer. What you need to do is disable. It's kind of like a like a toggle to disable one of the layers. So let's disable the background layer. And how you do that is if you look at the two layers here. To the left, there are three little icons. Okay. Um, I think you've already seen the one on the left turns off the visibility okay it toggles the visibility of the actual layer so if, for example on layer one we turn off the visibility the second one basically locks the layer it doesn't let you move it 
the third one has to do with masking. We'll look, look at that in a later, a later lesson. Okay, what we want to do though is to move the top layer. So what we need to do is to freeze the bottom layer to, by clicking on the, the magnifying glass for the background layer. So what we have basically enabled, we only have one layer, which is uh, layer one. Okay, so hit command, again drag, and we'll drag it around a bit, okay? Now, to make a, a layer opaque or transparent, we have a slider up here. We're gonna go into all of this later on, okay? Um, but to the left we have where it says normal. These are known, okay, we'll click on, these are known as layer blend modes, okay? This is a Photoshop kind of model. Um, but again, we're not looking at this really in this lesson. I just want to basically show you what we've done, okay? So if we take down the opacity a bit, okay? Over to the left here, we have layer one. And to the right, we have the background layer, which hasn't moved at all, okay? So this is really giving you, beginning to give you a feel for how powerful this program really is. And a lot of its power comes from these photo Photoshop type type blend modes that are built into the program. Okay, so let's leave it at there at that for this this lesson, and we we'll carry on with the next one. We now know how to move a layer around, either in conjunction with another layer or independently of another layer. Um, so how do we go about rotating a layer? Well, the answer is quite simple. Mac is Mac and Ultrafractal is Ultrafractal. So if we use the command key to actually move a layer about as we have done, okay, what we do to rotate is we just hold down the option key instead. So hold down the option, click and drag in whatever direction you want to go. And lo and behold, your layer or layers will move with you. Okay, we can then hold down and come down, move it up a little bit. Okay, that's what we've done. We've we've basically rotated and moved both layers by using the command and option key. Let's add a layer. Okay, because I want to demonstrate something slightly different there. So we now have three layers here. If you were now to click drag, or sorry, to shift click on the layer lock item of one of the layers, let's click on two. What it does is it disables the other two. In other words, it locks layer one and two. So we are, we're only working with layer layer two now. Sorry, it locks the background layer in layer one. We're now only working with layer two. Okay, let's go option, click drag, and we're just moving the top layer. Okay, let's shift click on the second layer sorry on the second layer it selects it okay let's move it around okay if we then were to shift click on the selected layer okay the other two are now locked we've got the active layer if we shift click on the 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 active layer it'll re-enable all three so let me run that by you again it's a little bit to take in click once okay it enables the layer you click on disables the other two. If you if you shift click on one of the others, it enables it, disables the other two. If you shift click on that same layer again, okay, the enable layer, it brings all three back. Okay, so you now know how to move, rotate, and then you have this nice little shortcut for actually dis disabling or enabling a few layers at a time. Okay, while we've had a look at uh, move and rotate, just uh, so that I don't forget later on, I'm going to show you a few more tricks that you can actually do with the hotkeys, okay? So we've got all three selected, okay? It's probably just as easy to show you with all three selected, okay? So command, click, uh, click drag, okay? Things are whatever axis you want to work in. You move around, rotate, okay, using the option key. Now, if you hold down command and option together, 
Okay, click drag. Oh, that's weird. That's skew. So you're skewing the layers. And to stretch them, it's shift command. So shift command in and out, okay? It's kinda it kinda has a threshold, okay, so that's why it's kinda bouncing around. But again, very powerful. You can change change the viewpoint quite easily just by by using the hotkeys like that. To show you basically what's available to you, let's have a look at the preferences, okay? So it's command comma to bring up the preferences. These are under, I believe, mouse. Yeah. So here you go, mouse actions. Shift, left drag, zoom. Okay, command, left drag. There's a whole range of stuff in here. Okay, I showed you, uh, I've shown you kind of quite a few of a few of the possibilities here. Um, okay, I see that Frederick hasn't updated this naughty boy. These where it says alt alt here, obviously it should be option. Uh, yeah, nothing. I suppose you can actually reassign these. Okay, I've never reassigned them. They're the standard, the standard mouse actions. Okay, so I've showed you how to use them. Uh, how you use them is at your discretion. Okay, let's take some of what we've learned so far and try to put it to better use. Um, okay, depending on what you've done, what I suggest again is save anything you've been playing with, uh, quit the program and relaunch it just so we're back on the same page as each other. Okay, uh, you should have something exactly like what I have here on the screen right now. Before we go any further, let's change the Mandelbrot into a Julia. So if you remember correctly, what we needed to do here was to hit the F7 button. Uh, or alternatively, you could use the, the Julia switch in the fractal mode window, which is down here. Okay, but let's dra drag the fractal mode, out, fractal mode panel out. Okay, and we'll try to pick out a nice classic Julia from the Elephant Valley. Okay. So, meaning to double click to bring it up, um, I did. You can then just redock the the fractal mode uh, panel. You can close the Mandelbrot and maximize this new Julia window. Now, before we go, I was going to suggest we zoom in, but I think for the moment we'll leave it zoomed out. First thing I want to do is change the outside colouring mode, okay, from the default standard uh, standard Mandelbrot to something else. Uh, okay, I think what we'll do we'll have a look in the public the public database, and uh, we'll have a look at DMJ, which is Damien Jones for anybody who's not familiar with with some of the actual coders. Uh, and I there's some some really nice ones here, but Lyapunov is what I'm looking for here. Um, okay, it's immediately it's sort of had a dramatic change here. But what I don't like about about this is the banding here. So in this particular algorithm, this this particular colouring, okay, by leaving things on linear and then clicking the repeat gradient, it gets rid of those lines. It doesn't. It's not that doesn't stand for all of them, but for for this particular one, it does work. Um, I'm going to leave the uh, thing on standard. I might change the actual variable to something like real imaginary or okay, I did not that one. Something I like basically. Uh, real part is that okay? I don't think there was much wrong with it with magnitude of that, but let's have a look at real part of that. Let's copy this layer. So make a duplicate of the layer. And again, we're going to change the outside coloring of this one to doodads, which is in uh, LDM. Okay. 
So LDM is the first option to do that. So I'm going to bring us up this kind of neat looking. Uh, it's got a bit of geometry, for lack of a better expression. But uh, okay, if we now look at the trap mode, okay, the trap mode, and this is this is how I work. I'm just basically showing you how I do it. Something, just find a flavor that you like and work with it. Okay, that that could work. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, that looks pretty neat. Okay. Um, We'll work with this one, I think. Uh, what we could do now is tighten up the Julia a bit. So let's go to the formula tab. Okay, let's bring our fractal mode panel back out. Uh, okay, before we do that, we'll pick an area. Okay, click, drag it. Oops, click, drag out. And we'll double click within that, that, that uh, rectangle to enlarge it. Okay, we can then redock for the moment. Uh, back in the formula tab, if we click in the Julia seed field on the explore uh, icon, um, again, whoops, I think I was a bit premature in closing that. Let's bring it, bring it out again. Uh, Okay, then just move around okay till we get something basically just okay that even that range is probably too big i'm going to actually turn the range the range down to 0.5 just to give me a little bit more more control on what i'm doing here so 0.5 okay so let's there's something okay there Okay, it's finally something you like. Okay, clicking on that and it'll update. Okay, so it's updated the fractal window. But before we do anything else, what we've now done is we've made a radical change to, to, to layer one. Okay, it's completely different than what's going on in layer two. So two things have to happen here: is we need to change the the update. To the Julia formula we just made. Okay, if we want things consistent, you don't have to be consistent. That could work. Let's have a look. I mean, that may have its uses. Okay, it could work with something else, or you know, for a blend or whatever, you, whatever you like. But I want to basically try to form or shape this fractal right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this down arrow, which I showed you previously in a previous lesson. Uh, you should be able to actually even without clicking the down area just just type uh, hit hit command option C okay well I've got to I've got to actually click it here and then click on the background layer the one we want to transfer this information to let's turn off the visibility of layer one okay we still have background selected and hit control command option V okay to update or alternatively you could have used the down arrow and paste okay so we're back on the same page uh, we can turn back the visibility on layer one okay what I don't like already about layer one is I don't like the blue in the background so let's hit um, F4 let's redock our layers properties to give us some more room Okay, so here we should be looking at this node here. Um, now, what I could do here, you know, basically I've got to. If you remember to to make a particular node or or, or a a, uh, a particular a particular color stop in, invisible or transparent, you go down to the opacity field, right click link color and, and opacity make sure that's selected then we can actually drag it down this is what we get okay i'm really liking the look of this so far but already i'm beginning to see that it doesn't really blend well to a horizontal format so uh, or sorry the landscape format so let's change it we'll go to the image tab we uncheck maintain width and height for the moment 
the change width to 480, height to 640. Okay, and then we recheck it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to shift, click, drag, and then I'm going to hit option, click, drag to rotate. Okay, I've used basically basically I've used zoom and rotate just to get the fractal to look like that. Okay, so I'm liking what we have here so far, but I'm not too happy with the gradient of the background layer. Uh, I need to adjust, either either change the gradient or change the values of the existing gradient. Um, so what I'm going to do here first is a little trick that I do, is uh, I'm going to make a copy of the background layer. Okay, by again clicking on the, the add icon in the, the layer palette. Okay, to rename the layer, okay, I click in the text, okay, and I just, what well, I'm going to call this is background copy, hit return, oops, background does have a K, where I come from. Okay, layer one, again, I'm going to click on it. Uh, I'm going to call this do that. Okay, take care here. Okay, I've had to stop the video and restart it because I kind of made a bit of a mess here. You've got to have basically the the layer at least um, active. In the you know it, it it it's not a locked or turned off here to be able to rename it. You can rename it by clicking on the text as, as, as I've done, uh, getting the field and typing in. You can right click and rename, or you can use the F2 shortcut. Again, you know, I don't want to bog you down with too many shortcuts, but you know, there's a few of them in there. Uh, a few more to add to the armory. Uh, once that's done, okay, what I'm going to do is turn off both of the upper layers, both the visibility and the actual uh, editability. Okay, so shift click on the background uh, magnifying glass and shift click on the visibility. This is what we're left with. Actually, what I want to do is keep the doodads layer visible. Okay, let's select the background layer. Okay, we've got the gradient. Uh, Command J to bring up the adjuster, and we will first of all I think play with the saturation. So we bring tone it down a bit. Okay. Uh, hue values. Okay, I think the hue is kind of all right. Uh, lumens, is something that's just not quite doing it. Contrast. Okay, let's go back to the, the hue again. Okay, it's kind of just a matter of really playing with it. You get something you like. Okay, I'll click. Okay. Um, what I might do here is make a further copy of this. Okay, uh, this time we'll change the gradient. So we go number of ways you can do it. If you recall, uh, using the gradient window, you can right click and go open, or on the actual fractal itself, we've got gradient replace. Um, do I want to go psychedelic? Again, we can use a psychedelic gradient and do what we want with it. Uh, I'm going to actually close the gradient row. No, I'm going to leave it open for a moment. Um, let's slide. Okay. Again, by moving the side, I'm just moving the gradient, the gradient along the curve. Um, okay, that looks kind of, kind of cool. What we could do is we could make a copy of the doodads layer. Okay, so layer two, we could call this doodads 
doodad shadow, okay? I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this one. A doodad shadow. That's well, we don't need to turn because it's on top. We don't need to turn everything else off. Let's hit Command J. Uh, let's turn the saturation completely off. Uh, let's turn the luminance completely off. Hit OK. Okay, so you've got a, an interesting fractal in itself there. Or what we can do is by clicking on the do that shadow and dragging it below do that. Okay. Uh, we now have it underneath do that. What we can then do is shift click on the, the layer lock icon here again. So it's the only layer selected. Okay, we can then hit uh, command, click, click drag to move just that layer a little bit. Okay, we can turn down the opacity a bit. So we're giving it a shadow. Uh, okay, that's it without the shadow. We can just give it a degree of shadow. Again, command. Okay, and then we can adjust the gradient a bit just to, if you like to, I come down too far with the shadow? Possibly. Um, yeah, you could just basically edit the the nodes at either end. Uh, you know, I've got to find out which end of, it's working on here. Uh, which end of the curve it's at. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's on the right hand end here, okay? So what we can do is we can just make it a bit softer. Okay. And there you have it. This is a, like a fairly, fairly basic fractal. Okay, and we've basically just used the tools that we've that we've been working on to date. Um, so I hope that helps uh, to get us started. You know, hope it hasn't been been too much too soon. Okay, um, let's experiment with this a little bit more. Uh, I kind of saved the fractal at, at this point, um, so I've got something to fall back on uh, in case you know, I end up with something I really don't like. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is, let's have a look at this layer 1 here, let's take it down a bit, okay I've already taken it down a bit, it's a bit too right, let's take it down, have a look at Possibly, I may just leave this on normal because we haven't really looked at the blend modes thus far. I'll leave it on normal. Uh, opacity of around 50 ish, 47. Uh, let's change the back. I'll tell you what, let's enable background copy. Change the outside of that since well, I'm happy enough with the background. There's some fractal gradient motion. Uh, okay, that's certainly interesting. Let's change its blend mode. Multiply screen. Take it down. Okay. Yeah, kind of. Okay, what we could do, as before, we could go into Command J, take down the saturation of it, uh, change keep the hue as it is. I'm sort of a bit worried about this blue. Um, suppose we could go OK, come back here and just isolate the blue. In fact, we could isolate both of those. Control J, selection only. Turn down the saturation. Gosh, it just doesn't want to go down. Something like that. So we're on screen here still. Okay. 
maybe something like that. We can come back to this blue, blue in a little while. Let's alter the the values of the yellow and do that. So as I said, I'm sort of liking how it's looking. Let's rotate it a bit there. Reposition and zoom. Uh, again, Control J. Let's take down the saturation. Uh, Bigger part, not that. So now the saturation of it. Uh, what I want is a sort of an old, an old world sort of look, an old sort of antique, antiqueish kind of look to it. Something about there, very close, not quite close, but not something like that. Probably bring up the camera a little bit. Okay, it's just by, by very fine adjustments of these that I think you'll get what I'm looking for. Something around that. Okay, that's everything selected. Zoom out. Z. Okay, we could have a look at maybe bringing in some of that background. Okay, that, that blue is continuing to bother me, so what I'm going to do here is use a slider. Slide the gradient and, well, give me a pop look. Maybe it's because it's on the screen. Aha! That's what it was indeed. So, Basically, with a few a few little adjustments, this is what I've ended up with here. 